Welcome to the top of the morning show, ladies and gentlemen. It's your girl TT from the D. Today is day 12. Can you believe we are into day 12 of the 30 day scripture challenge? And today's scripture we're going to talk about, or I shall say, unpack Psalm 4 and 8. Before I do that, I have to open up with a small word of prayer just to get us started for our beautiful day ahead of us. It is a thankful Tuesday and thankful I am. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you saying thank you in advance for the breath of life that you allowed to travel throughout our households to wake us up on this beautiful day that you have laid a pathway for us to travel. We ask you to give us grace and mercy as you do on a daily basis for without it, where would we be? We ask you to allow the hearer of the word today, the scripture that we are getting ready to unpack, to let it marinate within their spirit and do with it as they must and will. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we come to you humbly saying thank you in advance. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going to unpack Psalm 4 and 8. And kind of just give an overview, you know how I like to do a little bit of examples. So, in peace. I will both lie down and sleep for you alone. O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now, Psalm 4 and 8 is a great verse. I love the book of Psalm, and it has many, many chapters, and it goes on and on. I think that um, when we think about the words where David wrote constantly, we just get moved. I don't know about you, but I find so much strength in the book of Psalm. But in this particular um, verse, David wrote that he lied down and he slept and he woke because he knew the Lord has sustained him. He was talking about how God sustained him and woke him up. Right, and I know a lot of times we've talked about it. You've heard this. I'm not the first to say it. I'm not. I won't be the last to say it. And I'm definitely knowing that I am not the first person to say it to you. I'm sure if you're living life, you've heard this referenced at some point in time along your life journey, whether it was from your grandmother, your mama, uh, your neighbor, whomever, somebody that you looked up to, the the, the mother of the church. You understand? You've probably heard it. Um, So it's not like I'm telling you something new that God sustains us, right? We sleep a perfect peace. There are no perfect things in the world. There are no perfect people, but perfect peace. When you have a relationship with God and you allow him to carry you daily, you ask him to walk with you and talk with you. He does, whether you want him to or or not. Now, it's when we turn our backs on God that things can get a little hasty Things can get a little shady, things of that nature, right? We, we, I think it's safe to say either we have at some point in our lives turned our back or we know someone who has. Now, you know how some of y'all are, that was her. No, that was, that was him. Like that was you. (laughs) That was you. We, and, and this is being very transparent. I know I've had a couple of issues in life where I turn my back. Am I proud of that? No. But I do understand what it meant to turn my back. I also know what it feels like to been able to turn back. And I'm grateful for that. It ain't nothing like being able to go back to your father after you know you were wrong. And ask for forgiveness and know, not think, but know that he has forgiven you. Why do we want to have perfect peace, especially when we sleep? Because God is our safety net. He is our protector. He is the beginning, right? He is the light. He is the way. You've heard these things in life, right? Without him, where would we be? Now, some of y'all are going to try to battle, and I'm not here for it. I learned a long time ago that we are not supposed to. And if I'm wrong, then let me be corrected. But I heard that we're not supposed to go back and forth with people about their faith. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to tell you which way to go. I'm not trying to tell you which way to think. As a matter of fact, if you're on this journey with me, then you already know how God works. Okay. What did he say in his word in Psalm 4 and 8? It reminds us the Lord has our life in his hands. I'll read that scripture just in case you're just tuning in. In Psalm 4 and 8, it says, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. 
For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Now you can apply that where you want. Right? Pick and choose. You know how we do. You know how some people are. We pick things out the Bible that's fitting. Like, oh, yeah, you know, that sounds like me. Or, oh, I, I like that scripture. Because it's, it's talking about half truth in your favor. It's almost like when you Google and you're looking for something. You just put in whatever it is you're looking for. Um, part that'll fix um, my window being able to go up and down. You probably don't even know what part that is. I know I don't. But if you Google it, Google knows everything, right? They'll say that. Well, just Google it because Google knows everything. Well, you could grab the Holy Bible because God knows everything, right? The disciples put things in the world so we can learn and be able to one day say we almost know everything if we was to read the Bible and have understanding. In other words, the Lord has our life in his hands, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And this should give you some kind of peace. Because if you let your neighbor have your life in your hand, or the man up the street, or the woman up the street, your ex-girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, your wife, your husband, your daughter, your son, your mother, your father, chances are there's a good chance that you won't have perfect peace, right? They can't give you humbleness, right? They can't give you perfect sleep. Perfect peace, perfect health. There is no perfect thing on earth. Can they give you anything? Yes, peace of mind. Yeah, well, it it goes hand in hand with what you got to do as well. But imagine somebody giving you something that you have to not even worry about. And that's his peace. That's his peace. I think when we sleep, he gives us peace so that we can rise up with purpose again. It's like... A notebook. You write with a pencil. If you're taking a class or you're at a seminar and you're taking notes, I think it's best to write with a pencil, with an eraser. You know why? Because although this professor or this public figure is a professional and they are well versed in what they're getting ready to educate you on, because they're human beings, they can make a mistake. So they might say, oh, you know what I meant to say X, Y, and Z. So strike that last comment I just made. If you write in pen, now you scratching it out. You know how we doodle. What? It's like, what? So if you use a pencil, if they say, hey, I made an error. Let me uh, correct that. Please make a note of this. Right? It's just like when you go to church and your pastor says, well, make a note of this. Write down this scripture so you can study it at another time. You know, our pastor makes jokes, but he's serious about it. He said, there was a time when people came to church. And they brought their Bibles. Yes. I know we have the smartphones, right? I'm looking at my smartphone as I'm talking to you this morning. So, but he said, th- there was a time when you brought your notebook you or paper pen and you wrote down as the pastor was saying. Now y'all looking around like, anybody made a note of that? <laughs> right? And it's like, I felt bad because I'm like, yeah, here I am with my smartphone. Actually, I be li- I be recording service for those that don't make it or those that are not local that they can enjoy it as well. So yeah, I'm not able to write down, jot down what he says, but I said I gotta figure that thing out, right? And it's a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that when we lay down to go to sleep, we rise up. That or we should understand that we plan to rise up, but it's him. That ultimately will control if we rise or we don't. And I know you might say, oh, no, I don't believe. Okay, that's fine. That's good. It's okay. But the key peace that we're seeking is to sleep in perfect peace. A good night rest. Have you ever been so tired and then you lay down? It's just like when he said, lay your burdens down. Lay your burdens at my feet and go on. Pray on it and give it to me. A lot of times we pray on to give it to him. We go back and check on it like do I need to do any in and he's like I got it thank you I I have it go on be great I have it and it's like we're going back to check 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 with God right but we don't go back and check check nothing with man oh they said they got it I'm good you trusting that like our pastor uses this metaphor and I love it we trust that when we sit in the chair it's going to hold your body weight we trust that when you get in your car and you push that brake pedal, that that car is going to come to a complete stop. We trust that when you're thirsty and you turn on the faucet for some water, that that water is going to come out clear. Yes, but healthy. 
without anything in it that could kill us. We don't know what we're drinking when we turn on a faucet. You could clearly be somewhere and they'd be like, I hope you would drink out the faucet. And you're like, I did, why? Oh my God, that water has metal, like high levels of lead. Like You wouldn't see that. But God, he sees all, knows all, right? And I know I don't know everything. I am not perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. I ain't the, the smartest cookie in the jar. And cookies ain't smart, but I ain't the sweetest cookie. How about that? I'm not the sweetest cookie in the jar, but we all like a good cookie, right? I just want to come to encourage you with the word this morning, Psalm 4 and 8, right? To just know in peace you can lie down and sleep because of the grace and the mercy that God gives us daily. Daily, ladies and gentlemen. He extends that to us daily. We know that He's a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a loving God. He's a kind God. He's a healing God, right? And we know that when you seek peace, the best place to go is to him. Man can try to give you peace and bring you peace, and that's great. But when you seek it, sometimes it's just got to be you. No, all the time it has to be you that seeks it, finds it, savors it. Embrace it, touch it, feel it, understand it. So that when you ex- when you receive it more and more often, you recognize it, you appreciate it, and you breathe into that thing. The life that's breath, the breath of life that's breathed into, blown, I should say, let me take that back. The breath of life that's blown into our nostrils every day. As our heart works, as we sleep, and some of us snore, I know I'm a snore. I sound like a timber, uh, a a lumberjack, okay, with a uh, a rusty chainsaw. (laughs) My husband probably wouldn't find that funny, but I'm a snorer. So, yeah, that's one of those things. Yeah. But when I sleep, I, I have every intention to lay down in perfect peace. I do. And I have every intention to rise up. But I I remember telling somebody not long ago, and I've said it several times in different ways. I said, you know, we wouldn't know if we didn't wake up or not. (laughs) We wouldn't. If we died in our sleep, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't feel no kind of way. We Nothing. Like, what? So when you lay down, you just hope. You pray. Some of y'all don't though. Some of y'all just like, I'm going to lay down. I'm going to get up in the, you are? You sure? Nobody can say, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to wake up. You don't know. But you got to have faith that I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you tonight. You got to have faith. So I want you to have peace. He said he gives it to you. So hold on to it. Do what you want with it. But understand that he gives it to you. And when you lie down at night, I hope that you rest well each and every night. That's the plan. So that's all I have for you this morning. I'm not going to hold you all day. You know, sometimes I can get long-winded, but not this morning. It's a terrific Tuesday, and I want you to go out and be great. So if you're on your way to work, be safe. If you're on your way from work, be safe. If you're on your way to school, whether you are a parent that's back in school If you are a child, an adolescent, a college student, be safe. If you are just home and you're having a great day because you work from home or you're a homemaker, be safe. Find safety in his word, whatever that looks like. Well, this is your girl, Titi from the D, and I'll see you soon.